ta ta mi se. It's not Japanese, it's French. And it could be uh, either a verb or an adjective. Ta ta mi ze, we're ending with er, uh, is to tatamize, to tatamiize. Um, and tatamize, ending with an e acute, is the adjective to be tatamized and in a wider sense to be imbued with Japanese culture, to live on the floor, to, to go native, to, um, to adopt the customs of uh, Japan, whether in Japan or outside Japan. Um, and today's question is, Est-ce que je suis moi tatamisé? Am I myself tatamized? And um, it's a difficult question to answer. I live in Japan. I've been living in Japan now for, well, continuously for eight years. Um, and before that, I was a year, a year or so in Tokyo. So it's coming up for 10 years in Japan. But of course, you could argue that uh, I've been tatamized mentally since my childhood in the 1960s. Uh, I can see Japan. I can see... Japan, I can see the mountaintops and I can see the villages and I can see your images and baby, best of all, best of all, I can see your love. Why did I write this song at the age of seven? Partly because the Who had a song called I Can See for Miles. And I was kind of saying, well, I can see this other place on the other side of the world. I can see even further than you guys and the Who. Um, but why? Where did it come from? Where did my knowledge of Japan come from? My image of Japan? I've been reading this book today, uh, which is from the, my favorite old lady bookstore, Endymion Wilkinson, Misunderstanding Europe, a Misunderstanding Europe versus Japan, <clears throat> with a picture of a samurai on a motorcycle on the front. And it's, um, he's a diplomat, uh, English diplomat, who worked for the EU uh, in Japan, but also in China. I think mostly he's written about China. He's still alive. He's, um, this was published in the mid-80s, but he left Japan in 1979, so it's a particular generation's view of Japan at a time when the associations with Japan were things like Zen Buddhism and electronics companies and car companies like Honda, which don't even exist anymore, um, pre-anime manga, this soft power that Japan had to later generations. Um, uh, but uh, he's, he writes entertainingly and well about um, the history of the Western perceptions and particularly European perceptions of Japan. And uh, I, for instance, I wasn't aware of how deeply racist Pierre Loti had been calling Japanese at every opportunity funny little yellow monkeys. Um, this sort of thing which the um, YMO later satirized in their snake show um, skits on in between tracks and some of the YMO records. Um, but uh, Pierre Loti, of course, created the famous character of Madame Butterfly. Puccini was just one of various developments of that character, but essentially it's the idea of the, the totally submissive, uh, um, very young and very tiny and petite Japanese woman who is sort of allotted to a, a, a foreigner when that foreigner arrives at Nagasaki, usually, and becomes a kind of concubine and then... Um, is uh, deeply in love and, and, and heartbroken when, when the foreigner leaves Japan. And of course, it's a, it's a deeply, uh, it's a, a sort of fantasy scenario of a Westerner. Um, and it's the opposite of being tatamise, because these people uh, were not very impressed by Japanese culture in general. Um, I don't know if I give you many insights into Japan in these vidcasts, for instance. Uh, there's one where I actually went outside of the apartment and you could see a, a very Japanese environment and, and my sort of fascination with it. In some ways, it's become less uh, alien to me as a culture. It's um, The thing that really alienates me and the thing I find almost incomprehensibly strange and alien is American culture, weirdly enough. Um, that's, in a sense, also always been true that I remember being at school in the 60s in Scotland and being alienated almost to the point of shuddering with revulsion when people started saying hi to each other instead of hello because they'd been watching American TV shows and everybody said hi. And um, 
why, where did that come from, this hatred of informality, um, this hatred of uh, the sort of casual materialistic influence of America, um, or moralistic you know, influence of America. If you look at US TV shows of the 60s and 70s, they're very moralistic in a kind of relaxed Puritan way. Um, another, but it continues to this day, this sort of sense of alienation, especially now with the current administration coming in. Obviously, Obama's America was more acceptable to me. The, the previous America was very loathsome. Um, the Bush, the idea of the um, colonial liberalism, so-called liberalism of Bush and Blair, where you actually spread liberal values of what you think of as liberal values militarily through the world. You know, we don't like the way you're treating your women, so we're going to invade you and occupy you. And of course, it's bullshit and a cover for imperialism. In, in contrast to that, the current administration is in some ways refreshingly isolationist if they keep this up of actually wanting to withdraw the military bases and kind of not um, really talk to the rest of the world and not let the rest of the world in. I mean, there's an element of that which I kind of approve of, which um, is that, okay, that will be the end of this so-called American empire. Uh, who knows? Who knows if they'll walk that walk and talk that talk? But, but the culture, the signals, the smoke signals one gets from America, especially these days, is, is of a very alien culture to me personally. And um, that's one reason I don't really have friends here in Japan who are um, Americans. Uh, I've always, in the last decade, the, 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 the noughties, uh, there was this ongoing battle when I was blogging between me and Mark C in Tokyo, Mark C being an American, Harvard-educated, um, rather preppy American, but who was also very well informed about Japanese culture. But I, I think just the fact of his being American infuriated me, and some of his basic American attitudes infuriated me. Um, his judgmentalism and his kind of refusal to see with rather than simply to see as. He would see as an American rather than see with the Japanese. And I don't know, do I see with the Japanese? I don't really associate with many Japanese. Obviously, my main contact with Japanese people has always been women, and, and I have a long history of, uh, and it's funny that uh, I was just thinking, reading the stuff about Madame Butterfly in that book, my first Japanese girlfriend, this is about 1989, uh, Junko, I remember um, my, my university friend Babis um, at that time was going through this um, fascination with black women and he was having an affair with someone who had actually been a, an office cleaner at his work, who he almost ended up marrying actually. Um, and when she met my Japanese girlfriend, she started <laughs> very insultingly referring to her as Madame Butterfly. Um, I mean, I, I'm not very familiar, actually, with that whole Madame Butterfly imagery, but um, it, it, it usually goes with the idea of a very submissive partner. And I've never accepted that this, these terms submissive and obedient, or that Japan is a paradise for men because women are so manipulable. Um, not my experience at all. Um, what I find is that everybody is sweet and harmonious and civilized with each other. Although there are there are elements of craziness too that that, that come in, but um, generally I find I've, my experience of Japanese people has has been that they are by far the sweetest and uh, most reasonable people I, I've known anywhere, and uh, I'm kind of addicted to that sweetness, and and I'm totally alienated. I think rather than becoming tatamized myself. I've simply had my attitudes to my own culture uh, reinforced and made more extreme, and their attitudes of rejection mostly. I, I reject it, the sort of rampant individualism, the idea of a constant competition. This is a political idea, and it's very much been built into the Thatcher-Reagan years and neoliberalism, that everybody is in competition with everybody else, and that um, there's no harmonious model of society at all. It's really just a question of when or whether you go postal and actually assassinate your co-workers and um or or just people at random in you know with your the guns which your your constitutional right to carry so i'm deeply alienated from that and and of course in europe it's it's a bit less like that but it's still kind of like that um so um at the moment i'm setting up my next european tour so i'm kind of thinking in terms of you know rome and uh, paris and berlin um, Britain, 
and thinking what, what will they be like and how will I fit back in. I think the moments where you are most intensely aware of cultural difference are those very first few hours when, when you make the transition between two cultures. And um, so, but, but um, obviously I have a lot, of, most of my experience is virtual experience right now. And um, I have this experience of, uh, <laughs> of my alienation from American culture in things like, for instance, this Facebook group that I'm a member of, Osaka Sayonara Book Sales. Um, it's about books, so I thought I would sign up for it. And it's people who are leaving, Westerners who've lived in Osaka who are leaving. It's got um, 1,300, 1,400 members. Um, so a lot of people are leaving Osaka or, or else keen to get the books of those who are leaving Osaka. But the books are deeply depressing. I think I've only ever seen one even vaguely interesting book, which is actually a, a NRF book, which is my current fetish, and it might have been purchased from the old lady bookstore, but actually it was someone in Kyoto, so it might have been from somewhere else. But if I just scan through these books here, um, the, uh, the first lot is some children's books, Teddy's Train, First Hundred Words. First of all, it's the colours, these gruesome vomit-like colours and awful typefaces which are on these modern Anglo-Saxon books. I think their design is, is awful. Um, more children's books, Never Smile at a Crocodile, The Gruffalo. Um, then the, the next bunch is some acupuncture and yoga and meditation books. Or there's one book called Skinny Bitch, which I guess is it's meant to be empowering, but it just sounds deeply misogynistic that, a, that women self-help how to lose your weight, you know, is called Skinny Bitch. Um, I really see clearly the kind of fascism, whether it's body fascism or political fascism of the West, in these book covers. The next one, someone called Kevin, is uh, offering us, hey, surprise, surprise, his uh, Haruki Murakami books, IQ84. There must be so many second-hand copies of IQ84 floating around. I have always... Um, I've, I, read, I read a bit of Norwegian Wood. Um, somebody gave me a two-volume edition of Norwegian Wood, I think the Kodansha edition. And I mistakenly started reading volume two, so I was thrown, plunged into the middle of it, and I didn't understand what the hell was going on. But I did admire how avant-garde it was, that it just started like that. Then I realized I'd made a mistake, and it was actually part two. So I've never really read any, and it's a, a deliberate snobism on my part not to read Haruki Murakami because he's so popular with these... If there's one Japanese author everyone's read, it's Murakami. It would have been, back in the 70s, it would have been Mishima, Although most people were more aware of Mishima as a kind of political figure, suicide, theatrical, you know, fascistic and all the rest of it. But um, now it's this Murakami fellow. So I just, at being a snob, I just pass by all that stuff. Um, there's a lot of guidebooks to Japan. Uh, Lonely Planet guides are very popular with these people leaving. Um, so people are using Japan as a, a base for many uh, different Asian countries. Um, this is another thing I've never really understood, this thing Westerners thinking that Japan and China are kind of the same country because they're, they're so deeply... Japan still seems to me very deeply different from all the other Asian countries around it, which is one of the reasons that I'm kind of excited by Korea these days, going to Korea quite often, is that it, it is a, a very radically different um, environment. Um, now there's lots of... Uh, really ugly hardbacks by somebody called Nicholas Sparks. The usual kind of... And, and, and then there's <laughs> English graphic novels, so it's things like Captain America and um, Armor Wars, uh, the, uh, Superman, um, yeah, Saga, Iron Man, Armor Wars. I mean, such fascistic imagery. Uh, you know, it, you really... It really makes you despair of America just looking at the covers of these books because they're, they're all of you know, these sort of robotic, robotic muscular superheroes. Um, and um, very different from the Japanese uh, manga style as well. Next bunch is all kind of uh, integrated course in elementary Japanese, um, storybooks for young readers. A lot of people, I guess, had children, came to Japan and had children, or brought their children, I don't know. Um, Lonely Planet guidebooks. I actually have friends who work for or used to work for Lonely Planet, but um, it's funny, they just have these, I sort of hate contemporary um, Anglo-Saxon, Anglospheric book design. Um, B. 
because it tends to be a stock shot photograph and some Helvetica or a sans serif typeface, these Lonely Planet guides being a case in point. Um, etiquette for dummies, um, goddesses, heroes, and shamans, Tom Clancy, you know, there's a lot of these sort of embossed cover paperback type things. Eminem, <laughs> biography of Eminem, Tom Bradby. I don't even know who most of these authors are. I know vaguely who Tom Clancy is. There's a lot of this kind of legal thriller kind of thing. A lot of people are into these really awful... It's a very Puritan genre, it seems to me, the, the, the legalistic thriller. Because the idea in America is that you succeed by... You, you beat all your competitors, i.e. the other citizens, by knowing about the law or medicine. This is a kind of warfare in peacetime with your fellow citizen. C programming... Um, there's nothing sadder than an old book of programming. Um, actually, here is one book which I blogged about, which is a Japanese book. It's the only Japanese book on this whole page, and it's this book called How to Use the Word Fuck. So it's a Japanese book for Japanese people who are learning English. And there's one about how to use the word fuck, and I think there's another one, how to use the word cunt or something. I mean, it's kind of uh, very odd to, to us and the kind of thing you would buy as a novelty. So it's a, just a very trashy kind of world which is summed up by... Osaka Sayonara, and um, actually my, the only uh, American acquaintance of mine, a Facebook friend of mine who lives in Osaka, is leaving. He's, he's got very sick of the city. It actually starts to see it almost in theological terms as an evil place in some of his moods anyway. Um, he's, he's leaving, I think, next month, going back to New York City, and I think he'll, he'll find New York sadly changed and very difficult to... Uh, he's looking for a room just now and in uh, the greater New York area. I think he'll, he'll find it difficult. I don't know what his financial resources are, but um, um, I'm sure he's very disappointed in me that I wasn't more amenable to, to friendship or whatever, but uh, it's, um, it's just something that, that happens in Japan is that you, either, you would either seek out people like you or you would totally avoid them. I have some foreigners here. They live in uh, the building next to Castle and they work in the Universal Theme Park. And um, so we, I see them in the, the 100 yen store where I buy my food. And I, I see them so snickering when they see me. They probably have this thing about, oh, there's a pirate guy. He's not one of us, but he's, he's sort of Western. Um, he looks like a total eccentric. I wonder if I have, uh, possibly I've become an eccentric because if you don't fit your, the new culture and, you don't, and you're getting increasingly alienated from the old culture, where do you fit? Um, I'm probably totally anomalous. If I were to leave my books, if I were to leave Osaka, um, you can see that they would be, um, they'd probably go straight back to the old lady bookstore. Um, but they would be a, a certain kind of, I think very anomalous, very off the chart kind of bunch of um, titles um, because they're old because they're uh, Francophile. I don't know, I should probably hang out with more French people. Um, the next people who are going to visit, um, I'm very antisocial in Japan. I don't tend to socialize with anyone except Japanese women <laughs> and, um, who are, who are um, amazingly nice. But um, uh, my friends from Australia, Scottish, well, David is Scottish. David and Janet are coming next month and we're probably going to take a trip up to um, Kanazawa. And um, I'll enjoy that because I, I do like Scottish people. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not universally down on everybody in the West. Scottish people, to the extent that they're politically on the same page as me, um, and um, culturally. I mean, David, having been in Orange Juice, comes very much from the same music scene that I emerge out of. And, um, but, but living in the present and living in Japan and being a Westerner, it is... a it, it's weird, I'm literally on tatami a lot of the time, so I am tatami zei from that point of view. Um, but in, in many ways I've become J Japanized in, in terms of the need to be polite and conciliatory all the time and to blame oneself first, this, this need to... It's a, a personal morality above anything else, but also the whole aesthetics of... Uh, I mean, the kind of photographs I'm taking of street scenes. Yesterday I put a single photograph on my Tumblr page of an old closed electrical store called Momoya. And um, it's just something quite uh, charming and eccentric to me anyway, to my eye, about that store frontage, which is just a few streets from here. 
uh, which I'd never seen before yesterday, and um, which got uh, probably more thumbs up on Tumblr than this video will get. Hi, Tumblr. Um, but um, it's because it requires less investment of time and energy. Um, yeah, I, d I don't know what to conclude. Um, um, Tatamization happens, um, and, and I suppose you only notice it happens because you feel yourself drifting away from whatever else sustained you morally and um, aesthetically. Um, I haven't, uh, I don't, there are lots of things I don't engage with in Japanese culture, and I have the privilege not to have to engage with, like the Japanese TV, um, Johnny's Jim Shaw, you know, all this stuff. I don't have to engage with that. Um, I don't have to engage with anything. Uh, so I can choose to, it is a bubble, it's very much a bubble. I can choose to interact with um, French culture of the post-war period or whatever it is, or German culture. I'm looking forward to, to being in Germany uh, for most of May. And um, I'm doing a little work for the Haus der Kultur in der Welt. Uh, um, and also doing a couple of performances. Performances, um, yeah, I'll announce my tour schedule and stuff in due course, but um, it's funny because I'm sort of thinking in terms of Europe right now, um, although it won't, it's, uh, I'm still here for a couple of months more, month and a half or so more, but um, I, kind of, I kind of don't like leaving Japan if I had the financial independence to stay here and the, and the you know, legal framework to stay here all the time, I probably would do that, but I think it's, it's good for me to be forced to leave uh, every few months and um, it keeps me open. First of all, I'm much more sociable when I'm touring in Europe and I tend to make new friends and young friends as well and um, uh, to have new experiences and see new things and to, to get up to speed on what Europe is thinking. Particularly, I mean, if I have to uh, reproach Japan for anything, I would reproach it for a lack of um, what we think of as the contemporary art, the critical spirit, first of all, and also contemporary arts um, interrogative function, <laughs> you know, the, the idea of there being uh, uh, actually something useful in being a little bit aggressive towards the mother culture, the host culture. I think Japanese culture has never done that. It's um, got a very strong home bias. It celebrates Japanese values and um, and is all about selling things, and you know, there's an, an element of that to it. But it also, I don't know. There's there is this. If I look out at the bridge out there see all the little trucks going, constantly going across the bridge. Um, I'm reminded of just how orderly things are here and how quickly you can get used to this orderliness, efficiency, the train system here, the way that people, uh, the super legitimacy, I've called it, of the train drivers and the, the white-gloved staff who, who, who are and just the hygienic standards everywhere, the standards of uh, decency and gentleness to, to strangers sense of an extended family, um, and even a, a certain tender-mindedness which you don't find in other Asian countries like uh, Korea or China, a sense of um, generally not encountering aggression. But then, uh, you know, other Westerners have had different experiences if you interact in, you know, as, a, as an employee here. And I'm sure all the people that are leaving their books to Osaka Sayonara book sales are employees who are so-called Japan hands, who are sent here by companies. <clears throat> um, and that's a very different experience. You have to remember that my Japanese experience, in some ways like my American experience, came via the royal road of being a rock star. When I was uh, first coming to Japan, I was paid to come here by touring agencies, groupies waiting in hotel lobbies for me. I mean, everybody buying me dinner and um, being super nice to me. Same in America, in the late 90s onwards, um, I, st I started living in New York because I had this fantastic reception from the Americans as a, a kind of minor rock star, pop star. Can there be a better introductory experience and perhaps also a more false introductory experience than that? It's um, a very particular way to first experience a culture. And then with Japan, it's um, things have settled, the silt has settled and I've, I've become just an anomalous eccentric who lives here, and I'm not really known. Um, I still am working. I mean, I've just actually spent the last few days doing a, a track for a, an animation film, which will come out. Um, 
sometime later this year, um, which is very indebted to French culture. So it's actually easy for me to get into my French way of thinking and uh, make a, a sort of Gansburg-style track for that, uh, knowing that the Japanese will love that and uh, that we're very much on the same page in our reaction to French culture. I don't know, it's possible that, I, that I've just lived in a series of bubbles. Even my New York experience, I was living very much in the Asian part of New York, living down at the bottom end of Orchard Street in the Lower East Side, in Chinatown, and therefore with, a, with an Asian sense, although, albeit a Chinese-Asian uh, sense of the city. Anyway, I don't know, it's, it's just brushing the, the, the surface, um, skimming the surface of an enormous topic, is one tatamized, um, Japanized by living here? Uh, and the answer is probably, boringly, yes and no. Open University.